If you don't do as you are told, you will die. These are the very same harrowing words that 14 hostages would hear in the early morning of Wednesday the 22nd of February in 2006. Words that were soon followed by the tightening of cable ties around their wrists as a group of thugs loaded £53 million worth of cash into a 7-ton lorry. This is the unbelievable story of the Securitas Depot heist, the UK's largest bank robbery in history. Now, before we get into the actual details of the robbery, we first need to understand who the robbers were and why they chose this location in particular. So, who made up this audacious group of thieves? Well, the crew consisted of six key members. Stuart Royal, the used car salesman from Langley. Emir Heisenaj, the insider who used a hidden camera to record information. Jetmir Buchpapa, the would-be kidnapper. Roger Coots, the money smuggler, Lee Rusher, the communications lead, and finally, Lee Murray, the ex-cage fighter who couldn't resist the concept of being a millionaire. But in total, there were around 40 players that took part in this scheme, including a man named Sean Lupton, who is rumoured to still be on the loose to this day. But why did they choose the Securitas Depot in particular? Well, in 2006, the Bank of England decided to outsource the distribution of its currency to five separate companies, Group 4, Securicor, Halifax, the Post Office Limited, the Royal Bank of Scotland, and last but certainly not least, Securitas. Across England and Wales, there were approximately 28 depots responsible for holding new currency and storing used currency for redistribution purposes and it was one of these centres that the notorious crew would soon set their eyes on. Prior to 2006, a large UK bank called Barclays used to manage its own cash supplies and had a depot located at Medway House in Tonbridge, Kent. Ironically, this location was strategically chosen due to its proximity to three police stations in the surrounding area, but in an attempt to save money and to increase the efficiency of cash distribution, Barclays decided to hand over the reins to Securitas, who in 2006 were officially given the responsibility of running the Tonbridge Depot, which operated 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, employing 80 full-time staff to manage the workload. Their primary tasks involved sorting and counting banknotes that arrived via armoured vehicles, and then dispatching them to empty cash machines that needed replenishing. A man named Colin Dixon served as the manager of the depot, who lived in Tonbridge with his wife and young child. Due to the nature of his job, he received training not to disclose his home address to colleagues and to vary the route of his daily commute. The family were even told to own two cars, so Colin could alternate between them to throw off any suspected criminals. Another key point I feel is necessary to explain is that Colin was instructed that if he was to ever be pulled over by the police, he should remain inside the vehicle, provide the officers with a document explaining his job, and then follow them to the nearest police station to cooperate with their inquiries. But little did he know that this training would be the catalyst for the chaos that was about to come. On the 21st of February in 2006, Colin Dixon, the manager of the Securitas Cash Depot in Vale Road, Tonbridge, found himself in a harrowing situation. While driving his silver Nissan Almira on the A249 in Stockbury, he was flagged down by what seemed to be an unmarked police car with blue lights positioned behind the front grille. A man dressed in a high-visibility vest approached him, and assuming he was a police officer, Dixon complied when asked to enter his vehicle. But this was no ordinary police car, and the individual who had pulled him over was not a genuine officer. Unbeknownst to Dixon, he had fallen victim to a ruthless gang planning one of the largest heists in the world. They drove him along the M20 to the West Malling Bypass, where he was bound and forcibly placed into a white van, before being transported to a farm in a nearby town called Staplehurst. Simultaneously, Dixon's wife and eight-year-old son were also taken hostage by men disguised in police uniforms. These intruders convinced the family that Dixon had been involved in a car accident and coerced them into getting into their vehicle. 
The men then drove Dixon's family to the same farm where he was being held captive. The Securitas manager was kept under a constant threat of violence, emphasising that non-compliance could endanger his family's safety. But then, in the early hours of February 22nd, the entire family was taken to the Securitas depot in Tonbridge, where the rest of the plan was to take place. Upon arrival, the robbers armed with AK-47s and shotguns proceeded to restrain 14 employees at the depot. They wore balaclavas to conceal their identities and after a terrifying two-hour ordeal, the robbers fled at around 2.45am, leaving the staff, Colin and his family locked inside the cash cages. Thankfully, one staff member possessed a key to her cage and was able to free the others. However, it took half an hour before they could raise the alarm and contact the authorities. Fortunately, no one had sustained any injuries by the time the police arrived at the scene, but they were unable to prevent the gang from successfully stealing a staggering £53 million worth of banknotes from the cash depot, making it the second largest cash robbery worldwide. But later that same day, police launched an investigation into the incident, tracing several vehicles believed to have been involved. Among them was a parcel force van suspected of being used in the abduction of Dixon and his family. The van was discovered abandoned near the Hook and Hatchet pub in Hucking, close to Maidstone. A Volvo S60 and a red Vauxhall Vectra, which had been disguised as unmarked police cars during the abductions, were found near Leeds Castle where they discovered that the Volvo had been set on fire. Colin Dixon's Nissan Almira was located in the car park of the Cock Horse Pub in Detling. Additionally, Kent Police recovered a white Ford Transit van from the car park of the Ashford International Hotel, and inside they discovered £1.3 million in cash, along with firearms, balaclavas and body armour. Subsequently, forensic teams accompanied by armed police officers raided a house in Southborough, resulting in a confrontation with two individuals who fled in a blue BMW near Whitstable. Following these events, the white seven-ton lorry believed to have been utilised for transporting the stolen money was eventually recovered by the police at an undisclosed location. However, despite all of these new discoveries, the first arrest wasn't made until March as the police also conducted a raid on Elderdon Farm where they found a man named John Fowler, a car dealer and owner of the farm, who was later charged with three counts of kidnapping. Well, after this, arrests continued to trickle in and after a few months of investigations, a total of £19.7 million in cash was successfully recovered. However, this left an astounding £33 million, which was still unaccounted for, and several crew members still on the run. Now, if there's one thing the public love, it's an entertaining story. And with movies like Ocean's Eleven or The Italian Job, which pretty much glorify the act of thievery, it's not too difficult to see why. There's also a certain sense of respect the public seem to have for somebody who is able to master their craft even a thief to some degree. However, that same respect is usually extinguished the moment they are caught, and so fortunately, or maybe unfortunately to the darker-minded viewers out there, every single crew member responsible for the Securitas Depot heist was eventually brought to justice. Well, all except for one, a man named Sean Lupton. But first, how were the rest of the crew caught? Well, Stuart Royal was the first of the main crew to be found. He was also hiding out in the Elderdon farm, and he was swiftly charged with conspiracy to steal from Securitas. Roger Coots was next to be caught after £10 million of the stolen money was recovered from a car park in Welling, which was being rented under his name. In similar fashion, Lee Russia was caught when police found £8.6 million in cash in a lockup garage rented by his cousin as well as the discovery of a gun and ammunition in his very own shed. Consequently, as Lee Russia was the one who brought Emir and Jetmir into the operation, their communication was eventually uncovered, and so this led police to arrest both men soon after. And finally, Lee Murray, the ex-cage fighter, was the last to be detained, after being discovered at a shopping centre in Morocco, almost ten years after the robbery. But as I previously mentioned, 
Police theorised that there were approximately 40 members in total that contributed to the bank robbery, and with only 36 arrests, there are still potentially a few players yet to be found, as well as £33 million in stolen cash. So, where is the money? And more importantly, who has it? Well, it's impossible to answer this question with absolute clarity, but it is strongly believed that at least a fraction of this large sum of money is with a man named Sean Lupton. Sean's daughter, Jasmine, was aged only 14 when her builder father disappeared in November of 2006, coincidentally after being quizzed by police over the infamous raid which occurred nine months earlier. Now in her 30s, she believes her fugitive father may still be hiding out somewhere in northern Cyprus, where he was previously spotted leading an extravagant lifestyle of fast cars and glamorous women. And it's certainly not too hard to believe, with £33 million still unaccounted for. But until he is found and brought to justice, we will never know for sure. But what we do know is that the Securitas Depot heist is an event that will surely be remembered as one of the most successful bank robberies in history, with well over 50% of the loot still out there. Perhaps the money is just hidden in another lockup somewhere undiscovered, but I think the idea of one man living the high life while his colleagues rot in prison is for sure a more exciting ending to this story. But either way, let me know in the comments where you think the money is, as I'd love to hear your theories. Now, over the years, there have been many notable UK bank robberies that I could have made a video on, including the Great Train Robbery of 1963, the Knightsbridge Heist of 87, or even the Northern Bank Christmas Robbery of 2004. But in my opinion, the most interesting case that I found during my research was the Securitas Depot heist. That being said, if you would like me to cover another bank robbery, whether that be in the UK or somewhere else in the world, just let me know down in the comments and I'll start working on the next video. But until then, make sure to check out the video on screen now, where I take a somewhat controversial look into the dark underground of UK retail.